Rock climbing is one of the fastest growing sports today, with indoor climbing gyms opening up in many cities, adventure outfitters offering rock climbing tours, and even ongoing efforts to make rock climbing an Olympic sport. What does rock climbing have to do with economics? Quite a bit, as we will soon see. Rock climbing involves a trade-off, one with benefits as well as costs. It provides the benefit of personal satisfaction and accomplishment, but at the cost of many hours of practice and dedication, not to mention expenses. Therefore, rock climbing requires one to make choices because time and money, among other resources, are limited. Economic decisions are all around us, from what we choose to study in school, the foods we choose to eat, the types of products that businesses produce, to how governments manage their budgets and control fluctuations in the economy. Economics is defined as the study of how individuals, businesses, and societies make decisions to maximize their well-being given limited resources. This lecture describes seven important key principles that encompass much of what economics is about. These principles highlight how economic decision-making extends well beyond that affecting money in our economy and shows how economics influences the everyday lives of people in the world around us. Let's start with our first principle. Economics is concerned with making choices with limited resources. As our rock climbing example showed, economic decisions involve much more than just how a person, business, or a country handles money. It involves any decision that requires one to make choices with limited resources. Resources can include money, but it also includes one's time, intellect, effort, and even a little luck. The second economic principle is when making decisions, one must take into account trade-offs and opportunity costs. Every decision involves a trade-off. If you choose to go to school, you give up time that could be used to earn income. If you choose to major in economics, you give up an opportunity to major in another subject. If a country chooses to ease restrictions on carbon emissions, it gives up an opportunity to tackle climate change. In each situation, something is given up to pursue something else, and this is referred to as opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is the value of the best alternative that a person, business, or country gives up when a decision is made. People sometimes fail to fully take into account opportunity costs by spending too much time on a task that results in relatively small benefit, such as standing in line for hours to get only slightly better seats to a concert. The third economic principle is specialization leads to gains for all involved. Why do most of us shop in grocery stores and department stores? It's because we don't have time to grow our own food or sew our own clothes. Even farmers will shop at grocery stores because although they grow food, they often specialize in one or two crops. Specialization allows people to do more of what they are best at. If you are a great cook, you might work at a restaurant. If you are great at fixing cars, you might work at a body shop. By specializing in one's talents and then trading the resulting goods and services, everyone is better off. The fourth economic principle is people respond to incentives, both good and bad. Why do you spend many hours studying? It's because you are responding to an incentive to earn good grades, which may lead to a better job. Individuals and businesses respond to incentives that encourage them to pursue good deeds, such as picking up litter to keep a park clean, or organizing a charity event to support a noble cause. But people also respond to bad incentives. Prowlers steal because they are responding to an incentive to gain money quickly. If you see a $20 bill lying on the ground, you might take it even though it belongs to someone who dropped it. In order to prevent people from acting on incentives that might be deemed bad for society, rules are established to prevent people 
from acting on certain incentives, such as penalties for stealing or rules against keeping money that one finds. The fifth economic principle is rational behavior requires thinking on the margin. You may have heard of the freshman 15, an expression that describes the weight many students gain in their first year of college. One culprit of this weight gain is the all-you-can-eat cafeteria on campus. Do your eating habits change when you're at a buffet? Are you more likely to eat dessert if you don't have to pay an extra $5 for it? The choice of how much we eat involves thinking on the margin. At a non-buffet restaurant, the decision to order more food depends on whether the enjoyment from that food exceeds the additional cost. At a buffet, however, the additional cost of one more plate of food or dessert is zero, which means you will likely eat more. In fact, some buffet diners try to get their money's worth by eating as much as they can. However, if you eat so much that you become bloated or gain weight, you're not thinking on the margin because even if the monetary cost is zero, the marginal cost in terms of your health will exceed the benefit of the extra food. The sixth economic principle is markets are generally efficient. When they aren't, government can sometimes correct the failure. Free markets are the best mechanisms for providing the goods and services that people want at the lowest price. Competition forces businesses to be efficient, and flexible prices allow products that businesses provide to be purchased by consumers who desire them. However, free markets sometimes produce undesirable side effects. For example, an unregulated power plant might contaminate the local drinking water, or parents who cannot afford health care for their children might lead to more illnesses. Therefore, governments sometimes correct market failures by imposing rules on polluting firms or providing subsidies for services deemed necessary for the well-being of its citizens. Finally, the seventh economic principle is institutions and human creativity help explain the wealth of nations. Institutions include a strong legal system to enforce contracts and to protect the rights of its citizens, a government free of corruption, and a strong monetary system to ensure that people can save for their future. Equally as important as institutions is the ability of societies to create new ideas. Ideas allow new products to be created and existing products to improve. Human creativity requires a strong educational system and incentives for people to work hard. Wealthy countries tend to have strong institutions and many innovative businesses and individuals. To summarize, the seven key principles of economics highlight the importance of choices we make every day, why people make good choices as well as bad choices, and why people are better off than others. Indeed, economics is all around us.